Merry Christmas to everyone. I see many faces that were here yesterday evening. I hope to see few because it's a similar message. I hope you had a chance to open gifts last night. Such a beautiful tradition to share gifts in Christmas. Whenever you share or you receive a gift, it's both a sign of love and affection, interest, care, and also it's a sign of thinking what the person needs. Yesterday, someone gave me as a gift this orange vest to go biking. I thought, why? Like, and then I remember that one day, this person lives up the hill, and I was biking in the middle of the night with all my black attire, and she said to me, Father, you bike without anything. And uh, she said, that's not safe. You should wear like an orange vest. And yesterday, she thoughtfully gave me that as a gift. So whenever you share a gift, you share love, you express love, and you think what could be useful for that person. And that's, in a sense, what we share in Christmas. We share the gift of God the Father to humanity. The Gospel of Luke that we read yesterday says that Mary, after giving birth to Jesus, he was wrapped in swollen clothes and laid in a manger. It's almost like a literal image of a gift. Mary wrapped the baby and put it in a manger because the word made flesh is the gift of the Father to humanity. It's the gift that will transform humanity. The Father knew and knows what he dreamed for humanity, but also he knew and saw that sin ruined that plan, that dream. And that's why he sent the gift of his son out of love to be transformed by it. And that's what we celebrate in Christmas. And the letter of the Hebrew says that the Father thought well this gift. He prepared humanity to receive this gift in various ways, says it letter of Paul to Hebrews. God spoke to us, but now he speaks through a son. So he carefully orchestrated history till it was the right time to send the gift and humanity was ready to receive it. Why is this gift so perfect? In the first place, this gift of the son is perfect because it's what we need. If the problem of humanity was economics, he would send an expert in economics. If the problem of humanity was politics, as it seems today, he would send a politician. If the problem of humanity was health, he would send a doctor. But the father sent a son who was with God, who was God, full of grace and truth. He knew that humanity needed to be reminded of the amazing love has, God has for them. And that's why he sent this gift full of love full of grace and truth, says John. From his fullness we have received. Imagine that someone you know goes to Hawaii and they spend there like two weeks. One, you envy them. Two, when they come back, they have this sun tanned, like you can tell they were in Hawaii, <laughs> enjoying the sun. So, that's a little bit what the incarnation is. The word was with God. The gift was with God. He was eternally loved even before the foundation of the world. 
and he enters the world full of grace, full of love, to tell us that we are loved and to transform us one by one by love. That's the first aspect of this gift, that this gift comes to remind us of the amazing love God has for us. In the second place, and this is very important, this gift is what we need, and this gift is designed for you, is given to you. And this is, if you want a technical word, you can share then, show off when you go out of church. And all. we learn this. It's called the scandal of particularity. What did Far speak about the scandal of particularity? <laughs> What is the scandal of particularity? That what happened in one place, in one time, is meant for all and for each. That what happened in Bethlehem, in a remote place, in a remote time, long time ago, and with few witnesses, that's meant for all humanity and for each one of us. That's the scandal of particularity that this gift is not abstract. This gift is for you. Do you know when you get a gift and it has your name and it's special? Or when you get an email and the subject line says your name, it's either you're in trouble or it's personally for you. And this is the beauty of the incarnation. That it's not just for all, it's for you. When the angels receive the good news of joy that a Savior is born. The angel said this, a Savior has been born for you. A Savior has been born for you. How this is, I cannot grasp it. How can God love us all, but each at the same time, I cannot understand it. But I have a hint, and the hint is love. When you love, you pay attention. Like multitasking mothers can maybe understand this better. But when you love someone, that someone becomes special. And this is the message of Christmas. Everything was created through the word, says John. Everything was created through the word. And in that everything, is each one of us, is you. You are created through him. And he comes, he makes himself present in this world for you. He can pay 100 attention to you and to you, and at the same time, 100% attention to you and to you and to you and to you in the corner. This is the gift of Christmas. And this is the risk of not realizing this. Not realizing that gift, this gift is for you, personally given. That's the scandal of particularity. And that's what John said. We have seen his glory. We have witnessed this, but face to face. And this is what we share. That's how the incarnation bears fruit in the world, one by one, one person after the other, one person receiving this gift in a personal way. And thirdly, this gift is also special because you need to open it. This gift, says the Gospel of Luke, is wrapped, and it makes no sense to keep a gift wrapped under the Christmas tree. One, the giver would not be very happy. And two, you would not be able to enjoy it. So this gift from the Father to humanity implies response. John says, some have received it. Some, he came and his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, 
he gave power to become children of God. For those who open the gift, there is something special inside. The power to become the children of God. This is the beauty of the wrapping, that it implies some mystery. You don't know exactly what it is inside till you open. And the same happened with this Savior that is born, with the Word made flesh. It's wrapped, it's hidden. But those who accept it, those who receive it in this season, they begin to be transformed. And this is the beauty of celebrating Christmas as we do with Easter and as we do with many feasts in the Catholic faith, that we don't celebrate a day, we celebrate a season. Most of you here are Catholics, and, and this is a very unique element of the Catholic spirituality. We celebrate a season of Christmas, a time to be transformed by the gift, a time to contemplate the mystery. Christmas should not be reduced just to this Mass. It should be a special time. Last year, I shared yesterday, at the evening Mass of 2016, this man came to Mass after a long time, and he said to me, he, then he came with his family, he says, I want to come back to church. And at this Mass, we invited to the Alpha course, that is a 12-week course we have been doing here in the parish. It's going to begin in January again. It's a dinner, then talk, and then a small faith discussion. So we announced the Alpha course at the Mass, and he came. So the first night of the Alpha course, he came and said, Father, I went to Christmas Day Mass, and I heard you announce it. I thought, whoa, this was a good catch. <laughs> That's why yesterday we, we put like cards of the Alpha Course. Some of them are in the pews to see if there was any fish there swimming that could be caught. And I hope that not one, but many. But he came, did the course, came back to faith. He was not Catholic. He's not baptized. This year he joined the RCIA. He got married in the church because he was Catholic. Her, his wife is Catholic, but they never married in the church. He brought his children to First Reconciliation and First Communion. He joined RCIA. Now his wife is signed up for confirmation, and he's a new man. He was transformed by the gift. He opened the gift. He celebrated Christmas not as a day, but as a season. That's the gift of the Father to humanity. The gift of the life of His Son in us. The gift of love, the gift of peace that is wrapped, that is hidden, and that we need to receive. I finish with this. Last week, someone emailed me in view of Christmas days, this sermon, and this is a friend of mine, so it's not that she was unrespectful or I got angry, but she says, Father, I meant to tell you, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before at Christmas time, but I remember you mixed up the words stable and manger a couple of times during a homily. That never happens, but... The stable is the house for animals, and the manger is a box animals eat from. I think you said a couple of times that Mary and Joseph were in the manger, which doesn't really make sense. I thought you might want to know. I hope this is helpful. First of all, it was helpful. I never thought, I never understood this distinction. Actually, her daughter wrote a whole story with Father Maxim and myself about the mansion stable, <laughs> with an amazing story of Christmas. So I went to the Bible, and I look at the Gospel of Luke, and Luke says, Mary put Jesus in the manger. 
So I replied to her, hey, I, I agree with you, but in Spanish we say pesebre, that it means both the, the crib and, and the stable, that's why maybe I mixed. But the gospel says that he put Jesus in the manger. And he says, well, yes, this, but the distinction remains. And then she says, and by the way, manger in French means to eat. And the same in Spanish and the same in Italian. Manjare, or in Spanish, manjar, banquet. And that's when I realize that the gift of Christmas is not just a baby. The gift of Christmas is an invitation to a relationship with love. The gift of Christmas, the baby born in Bethlehem, aims for more, aims to grow, die on the cross, and then be given to us in his spirit and in the Eucharist. In a sense, the gift of the Father for humanity aims to a deep, deep intimacy and communion with humankind. That's the gift of Christmas. God in us. God for us. The Word made flesh and dwelt among us. He pitched his tent, is a true translation. He made a tent in the world and will never abandon humanity. And he wants to be eaten. He wants to be manjare. He wants to be a manjar for us. He wants to live in us. And that's how we open the gift. Receiving with faith. Receiving with praise. Glorifying God like the angels. Giving thanks to God for the gift of his son to us. So don't be ungrateful. Don't leave the gift unopened. Unwrap it. Receive it. Welcome it in your heart.